Hello and welcome to my tutorial on how to install the usual mod and Cockricot mod together. This is my installation and it's fully complete and I'm going to show you how to do it. In the Cockricot mod you have lots of interesting furniture choices and it works very well with the usual mod. Here is a rattan light which I really love. So let's go take a little walk down my street, you can see some of the things I've built. Over here in the distance is one of the sort of mansions I've built. Most of it is with the usual mod actually, but there's a fair few decent things you can do with Cockricot mod like that carpet, these bits of clothing up here, and then in this attic area I've left, there's plenty of old furniture which all comes from the Cockricot mod. I really really like both of them working together. I think they're fancy. In order to get this working, you need Minecraft version 1.20.4. Here's another little house that I made. It's really beautiful, and I made it with the usual mod and the Cockricot mod. So once you've got Minecraft version 1.20.4, you need to find your Minecraft folder. It should be located at C Users Admin App Data Roaming dot Minecraft. Obviously change your name from admin to whatever it is on your computer. Once you've found that folder, we can start downloading things. During the course of this video, I'm going to do a little survival playthrough, so you're welcome to watch that, but I would recommend you follow along with the steps on how to install it. All of the things you need are in the video description, so don't worry too much, and I'll break it down for you in steps. It's nothing complex, it's just rather tedious. So here's my little playthrough, and these are the mods that you're going to need. You'll need Architectry, which is useful for usual mod to work. You'll need the Continuity app, which is for connected textures. Fabric API, which is a very important mod. Then you'll need the usual mod for fabric. This is 1.20.4, don't forget. And you'll also need usual modeling. That's for the GUI tool. One final mod that you'll need is the Cockricot mod 1.20.4. Don't forget, that's the version of Minecraft we're using. It's very important. So now let's go ahead and download all of those things that we need. We also need some resource packs later, but don't worry about that for now. Let's just get the mods. The first mod we need is going to be Fabric API. So go over to CurseForge, search for the game versions, change the game version to 1.20.4 because that's what we're doing here. And then you want the one at the top, which is 972 or whatever. Download that one, leave it to download and leave it in your downloads folder for now. That's done. The next mod we need is going to be the Yushua Townscape. So again, go to CurseForge, because that's my preferred way of getting the mods. Search for 1.20.4, and then make sure you get the one for Fabric, which is 2.2.2. Leave that to download, and we'll move on to step 3. Here we can download the Yushua Modeling mod. This is useful for some of the tools to reposition items. Again, get the version for 1.20.4 and make sure it's for fabric as well. Set that to download and then just leave it there to download while we play the survival playthrough. Pretty easy so far. Step 4 is getting the Architectury mod. Again, get the correct version make sure it's 1.20.4, look down the list and select this one. It's very important we get the correct one. Once you've chose that, download it and leave it in the downloads tray for now. Brilliant. For step five, we need to download continuity. This is for connected textures. Make sure you find the correct version, which in this case is for 1.20.2, but it doesn't make any difference, so don't worry. Again, leave that in your downloads folder and move on to step 6 with me. For step 6, we need to download the Cockricot mod, which is very, very important if you want to use both Yushua and Cockricot mod, obviously. For this mod, you can head over to their website, which is a really beautiful website and it showcases all the different items and assets you can use in the game. Head over to the link that says download, there's a big one there, or the one at the top, that's fine. And on this page, you need the one that says mod at the bottom. Now, I couldn't get these to work for whatever reason and their Google Drive link also doesn't work for me, I don't know why. So I set up my own little Google Drive. It has both Cockricot things you need, that's the resource pack and the mod. You're welcome to go and download those from me, I guess. Not an issue. It's in the video description with all the others. Now that we've got all the mods, we need to go ahead and get the resource packs. These are the resource packs needed. You need one for the usual mod and one for the usual mod foliage. And you also need the one for the Cockricot mod, which will help load all of the assets in the game. So here is step seven. 
let's go ahead and download the Yushua resource pack. Again, go to CurseForge, that's my preferred way. Make sure we search for the version, click here, and then you want to search for 1.20.4. As always, you've got to go down the list a little bit, find the exact one. It shouldn't be too hard to find, make sure you get this one here. It's Yusha release 0.18.2. I guess the R number at the end is the revision number. Select that, download that one, and leave that in your downloads folder like the others. This one is quite a big file to download, actually. For step 8, we need to download the Yushua Foliage Resource Pack. There's only one of those available, so obviously you need to download that one. Leave that in the folder like all of the others. This one's a very small one, which is kind of funny. Easy process so far. So for step 9, you need the Cockercot resource for mod. You can try and download it from their website if it works. If not, you're welcome to use my Google Drive. The resource pack and the mod are available there. Now that's finished, we can move on to step 10. We've got to move the files. On the left is the Minecraft folder, and on the right is the Downloads folder. Put all of these mods, which should be the jar files, into the Mods folder in your Minecraft directory. Then go back, get all of the resource packs and put them into the resource pack folder. That was easy, wasn't it? Now you should have the usual mod and the Cockricot mod both installed with no issues at all. So let's go and test it out. Load up the Minecraft launcher, have a look at the different installations on the left. You want the fabric one, which is 1.20.4, then hit play. Once Minecraft loads, none of the resource packs are enabled, so you need to enable them. Here's a list, they say they're incompatible, some of them, but it still works. You can load any of them to the right, which is the selected side. I put the foliage one first, and then the usual release, that's always a good one. I'll also need to put the Cockricot mod, which is perfectly reasonable. You don't need any of the other mods on the left. Continuity sorts all that out. Then press done. It might take a little while to load the resource packs, but once it's on, you can see this fantastic interface. Here I'm going to create a new world real quick, it should work now. Set it to creative, change the world to usual test world. I'm not going to deal with any of the settings for now, I just want to play it. Load the game in, and it might take a little while to load at first, but don't worry, it should still be working. Once you enter the world, you can see all the foliage is a little bit different to normal. That's because it's the usual foliage, isn't it? Brilliant! If I press E and get up all of my items, you can see the Cockricot things, you can see all the things for the usual mod, and you can even see that rattan light I was talking about from the Cockricot mod. It's working! So now that everything's finished, the tutorial is pretty much over, but there's one little bonus tip. If I press F3, you can see that I only have 60 FPS. That's no good, it's a little bit slow. It actually is a little bit laggy as well, so we can change that by installing two more mods. The first one being Sodium. I would suggest you download this regardless of the mod you're using because it increases your FPS to whatever your graphics card can handle. So go to CurseForge, search for Sodium and you want the version for 1.20.4 which is Sodium 0.58. Download that one and leave it in your downloads folder or you could move it to your mods folder now we know how to do it. If you were paying attention, when we installed the usual modeling mod, it says if installed sodium, it need indium to work, which means we also need to download the indium mod. So again, go to CurseForge, download the indium mod, and take that one to your mods folder as well. Once you've got those two things enabled, you can head to video settings, remove VSync, and bring the max frame rate up to unlimited. Go back into the game and you can see your FPS surge. I'm using a 3080 graphics card, so I'm getting 1000 FPS. That is absolutely insane. And it should never lag your game at this point as well. Very happy days. One more final, final bonus tip is how to create a super flat world that's safe. Set it to creative in the creation screen, change it to super flat, turn the structures off because I don't want the villagers, Go to more and then game rules. Scroll down and disable raids, that way we don't have any of those crazy dudes coming. Turn off all of the monsters so we don't have any jellies in my flat world. Go down to world updates, disable the time of the day and do not update the weather. Now we'll just check them real quick, yep structures are off and it's super flat. Now we can create the world. Once we enter the world there's no jellies hanging around and there's no town here. It will never change the time of day and it's actually really good this way. See, if we change the time, time set day, you get a lovely blue world and it will never change. If you want to change the weather, you can just simply type in weather rain and it will start raining. 
If you want to do a build while it's raining, you can. Set it to weather clear, and you have perfectly clear weather. This extra bonus tip will help you if you want a safe, flat world. I hope this tutorial serves you well. It's fairly easy, it just takes a long time, doesn't it? If you've liked this video, subscribe. Send me a comment as well if you're having any trouble. I'm Mixicall, and I'll see you next time.